Hi, I'm Joan Walsh, the Bertrand Chair of Ornithology at Mass Audubon. Thanks for joining us on this, our third episode of our video blog. The first day of spring has passed and now we'll look for signs that winter is going in earnest and spring is arriving. Like the first Phoebe that arrived on our farm on Friday. Today we're also going to talk about a bird that comes through in the fall, sometimes when the first snowflakes are flying, and then comes back through in the spring on its way northward. That bird is the incredibly beautiful and for once well-named fox sparrow. Fox sparrow is one of the reasons to have a bird feeder. There's a cause for celebration when the first birds arrive in the fall, and even the most hardened bird lister can be heard to boast about the arrival of this spectacular bird. In the United States, there are four subspecies groups, and in the eastern United States, our birds are termed the red fox sparrows, and they are particularly fetching. From stem to stern, this is a gorgeous bird. It's fairly large, about 35 grams, so it stands out next to smaller song sparrows. Their head is boldly patterned with sooty gray and foxy rufous stripes, and the gray from the head wraps around the nape of the neck, almost looking like a gray scarf. The belly is creamy with awesome arrowhead-shaped spots of rufous that come together in a central spot like song sparrows. Except, in the fox sparrow, the spot is rusty red. The tail of the fox sparrow is undeniably rusty auburn. This is a wicked awesome sparrow, sophisticated and subtle with a song that has bewitched folks for generations. One of those people was William Brewster, the first president of Mass Audubon. Brewster lived on October Farm along the Concord River in Concord, Massachusetts, and 109 years ago today, on March 30th, 1911, he wrote this about fox sparrows. Sixteen fox sparrows singing gloriously all about the house in the early morning and again just before sunset, one following the other in quick succession so that the sound of their rich voices was almost perfectly continuous for minutes at a time. Here is a song from a fox sparrow in our yard last week. He's tuning up, getting fueled to make the nighttime flight back to his summer home, and while the likes of 16 singing at once is not likely to occur in Massachusetts anymore, we can appreciate Brewster's excitement and awe. Fox sparrows have a particular bunny hop motion they make when feeding. They do this in winter and on the breeding grounds, scratching the soil and the leaf litter, sort of like a toey, to kick up seeds or bugs. For us in southern New England, these are the last few weeks that we're going to have fox sparrows at our feeders and in our yards. They'll soon be flying north to the deep black spruce forests of Canada. There, the males will sing from perches. They'll mate. The females will build nests and young will be raised. Then they'll wing their way back south again in the fall and the young of the year will join our feeder flocks and fox sparrows will make us smile yet again. William Brewster's October farm is one of the newest properties to join Mass Audubon's 38,000 acres of protected land in Massachusetts. Thanks to the generosity of some very special donors, this site is protected forever. We have a few guest spots planned for this week. And for those of you who's asked, we have a pretty fantastic Song Sparrow mini, mini video in the works for you. Thanks for watching. Please leave us notes and questions, poems and photos in the comments below. We love hearing from you. And wash your hands.